So we're going to read a book by Alan Say called Kamishibai Man. Now, Kamishibai Man was a man in Japan in about the 1930s who would tell fairy tales. He would ride a bike around and on his bike, he had set up a stage and um, he had these illustrated cards that he would put into this little stage and he would tell the story. And for each part of the story, he would take a card out and put the next card in. So it was kind of like reading a book, but instead of a book in front of you, it was just the pictures and the Kamishibai man would tell the story. Also in this box on his bike, in this box, there were drawers and in the drawers, there were candies and he would sell the kids candies as he told the story. So he'd sell the kids candies. He'd tell the story. So kids would gather around to get candy and to listen to these fairy tales. Once television came around, these guys started to be not so popular because of course, TV, you know, you've got all these special effects and things like that. It's much cooler than listening to a guy tell a story. And fairy tales stopped being told person to person. They started to be told on TV or in books. These guys though are starting to make a comeback and around the world, people are learning how to tell stories with these illustrated cards. And here's an old bike, um, an original kind of old bike that shows the drawers and the way the stage was. And you can see the paper in there that had a picture of what the story was that the Kamishibai man was going to tell. And here's a picture of a modern day Kamishibai man. He's got this old drum to add some sound effects. You still have those illustrated pictures and kids gathered around to listen to the story. And this book is about a guy who makes a comeback. Kamishibai Man by Alan Say. For Margaret Einstead, Donna Tamaki, and Tara McGowan. So on this page we have the foreword and a foreword is sort of like a little message from the author to the readers actually explains why they wrote the book or gave you, gives you some background information about the book. So the forward from Mr. Say says, when I think of my childhood in Japan, I think of Kamishibai. It means paper theater. Every afternoon, the Kamishibai man came on a bicycle that had a big wooden box mounted on the back seat. The box had drawers full of candies and a stage at the top. We bought candies and listened to the man's stories. As he told the stories, the Kamishibai man would slide out the picture cards in the stage one by one and put them in the back, like shuffling a deck of cards. The stories were actually one never-ending tale, with each installment ending with the hero or heroine hanging from a cliff or getting pushed off it. To be continued, the Kamishibai man would say with a grin, and we children would groan, but not too much. Tomorrow, the hero and heroine would be saved for new adventures, and we would have our candies. Yes, they were cliffhangers. So when I came to America, that was one expression that nobody had to explain to me. Today, any sort of cliffhanger reminds me of the happy memories that Kamishibai had given me. And with this book, though it has no high cliffs, let me be your paper theater man for a day. You'll have to get your own sweets. Not long ago in Japan, in a small house on a hillside, there lived an old man and his wife. Even though they never had any children of their own, they called each other Ji-chan and Ba-chan. Ji-chan is grandpa and Ba-chan is grandma. One day, Ba-chan said, Ji-chan, you haven't said a word in three days. Hmm, I've been thinking how much I miss going on my rounds, he said. Ba-chan stared. How many years has it been, she asked. Hmm, yes, quite a while. But my legs are good, and I've kept the bicycle in good order. I don't know. But one day won't hurt, I suppose. Should I make some candies? 
That would be very nice, Ji Chan said. The next day, Ji Chan rode his bicycle down the hillside in the first light of morning. Mmm, how many years has it been? he asked himself. And do I remember such a fine morning, all so fresh and young? Well, good morning to you, rickety old bridge, still growing strong after all these years. Mm hmm. He began to hum a tune that his mother used to sing when he was a small boy. You see here, the setting of this story is Japan. And so in our illustration, you see mountains. Japan has lots of mountains. And you see this little hill that looks like it's stacked, like lots of layers stacked up on top of each other. And those are rice paddies. Um, rice grows in water. And so they cut the hills like this so that you have lots of flat little places for the water to collect and the water doesn't run all the way down, down to this river. There are some parts of this that look just like it would in the United States. We have some houses, river, rocks, bridge. And then there are these parts that look a little bit different. When he came to the city, he stopped humming. This isn't right, he said. I must have taken a wrong turn. But there's that old house I used to go by every afternoon. A car horn blasted at him. Then another. Why are there so many cars all of a sudden? Look at these tall buildings. You'd think I was in another country. A truck blasted its horn behind him. He pulled into a vacant lot and panted. Can't a man ride his bicycle in peace? Don't remember such rude drivers. Catching his breath, he looked across the street and gaped. Can this be? There's that old noodle shop. Used to be the only building here. That and a nice park all around. Now look at all these shops and restaurants. They chopped down all those beautiful trees for them. Who needs to buy so many things and eat so many different foods? So I guess it's been a really long time since he's been down in the city. They've cut down the park. They've built all these buildings. It's gotten really busy. It's not quite the way he remembered it. And it doesn't sound like he's too happy about the changes. Shaking his head. He slowly took the canvas off the box on his bicycle. He propped up the stage and checked the story cards inside, patting each painting. Then he opened the bottom drawer in the box. Mmm, you little jewels, he said, and started to hum again. Thank you, Bachan. You make good candies, just like in the old days. I love this illustration. It's one of my favorites, just because... We still have that kind of dark, gloomy background. It's been this big city. It's not the um, park anymore. But Mr. Say made his face glow, and he looks really happy here looking at the candies. And something about this picture, I just really love it. From the top drawer, he took out two wooden blocks, and holding one in each hand, he hit them together. A sharp, loud clack rang out. Come gather round me, little ones. Your Kamishibai man is here again. Clack, clack. Come get your sweets and listen to my stories. Clack, clack, clack. Ah, uh, yes, I can see you now. All your bright faces, clasping coins in your little hands. So happy to hear my clappers. So happy to see your Kamishibai man. Now let's look at this illustration for a second. It's really different from the ones he had done before. So if we look at this illustration, you can see there's a lot of details. We know that it's a painting, um, but it still looks pretty realistic. When we look at this one, it looks more cartoony. There are lots of bright colors. Um, it's not as detailed. And another thing is look at Ji Chan's face. He's a lot younger. His clothes look kind of similar, but he looks a lot younger. So what's happening now is that 
he's remembering what it used to be like. You see, there are the trees from the um, park in the background again. He's not in that vacant lot, at least not in his mind. He's not in that vacant lot. He still is in the vacant lot, but he's just remembering the way it used to be. So this part of the story is happening in his mind. It's his imagination. Patience, everyone. You'll get your sweets, each and every one of you. I have all your favorites, red ones and green ones and the soft ones on sticks. And here comes that boy, the one who never has any money. Hmm, I'll get to him later. So which story will it be today? The mighty peach boy born from a giant peach? But wait, let's start at the beginning. Hmm, long, long ago, there once lived an old man and his wife who had no children. After the peach boy, the bamboo princess was a nice change, a gentle story. Then my favorite, the old man who made cherry trees bloom. And when I was finished, you all went home happy, except for that poor boy. Would you like a candy? I asked once. He said, I don't like candies and ran away. Then one night I was going home and saw a crowd of people gathered in front of a shop. They were staring at something called television. I was curious too, but not for long. It showed moving pictures. They were all jerky and blurry and had no colors at all. So this is when televisions were first starting to be sold to people. So they didn't have color. They were black and white TVs. They didn't have really super clear pictures, but it was the very beginning of television. It wasn't long after that when television antennas started to sprout from the rooftops like weeds in the springtime. And the more they grew, the fewer boys and girls came out to listen to my stories. How can they like those blurry pictures that better than my beautiful paintings? I asked. But there was nothing to be done. As I went around the familiar neighborhoods, the children started to act as though they didn't know me anymore. Look how sad he looks. And you can see all the antennas on top of roofs. And their houses look a little different than ours. They have different kind of roof shingles, a little different design. That is how they looked in Japan. And um, the TV antennas are up here because we didn't have cable. So you had to have an antenna if you could see anything, if you're going to see anything on your TV. Even so, I went on clacking my clappers. And one day, a little girl poked her head out the window and shushed me. Imagine a little girl shushing me. The Kamishibai man was making too much noise. I sat on a park bench and ate a candy for lunch. How could the world change so quickly? Was I a bad storyteller? Then that boy came, the boy who didn't like candies. Why aren't you watching television? I asked. I don't like television, he said. But you like my stories, I said. And he nodded his little head. I got up and set the stage. What's your favorite story, I asked. Little one inch, he answered. So I told him the story of a brave little boy who was only one inch tall. And as I told the story, the boy never looked at the picture cards in the stage. He was looking at me the whole time with his mouth wide open. He even smiled now and again, now and then. When I finished the story, I started to take out some sweets to give him, but he was already running away. Wait, I shouted, but he kept running and never turned his head. That was the last time I saw that boy. That was the last day I was Kamishibai man. I was that boy, a loud voice cried out. Now let's look at the illustration here. We're back to that lot. We see the big buildings and the paintings, the colors have gotten darker again and a lot more realistic looking. So we're not in his imagination anymore. We're back in the real time. Startled, 
the Kamishibai man looked up and saw that a large crowd had gathered before him. We grew up with your stories, someone else shouted. Tell us little one inch again and the bamboo princess, the peach boy. He started to say something and people began to clap their hands. He took a deep bow and the applause got louder. A young man with a movie camera struggled up to him. They bowed to each other, and as the old man gave him a candy, a roar went up. Look, he has all the same old sweets, just like the old days. And the office clerks and shopkeepers, bankers and waitresses, housewives and delivery men all lined up in a big circle around the Kamishibai man. It was dark when he got home. Achan was watching the evening news. The Kamishibai man was the featured story. I see you had a busy day, she said. It was a good day, Chan nodded. Will you be going out tomorrow? Mom, yes, on the day after. Then you'll need more sweets. That would be very nice. Um, could you make it? twice the usual amount? I'll see if I have enough sugar, she said, and shut the television off. So in this illustration, you see Ji Chan and Ba Chan are sitting on the floor. They're having their dinner. This is a pretty typical table. Um, when I was little and growing up, we had a table like this too. You sit on the floor and you're Little feet can go underneath it. But it looks like they're both pretty happy. How do you think Ji Chan feels about his choice to decide to go back into the city? In the beginning, it seemed like it was pretty scary. A lot of things had changed. It was busy, it was built up. But in the end, I guess not that much really did change. Everybody still loved his stories and still gathered around him. And I think that made him feel really good. On this last page here is just an explanation of what the Kamishibai were and how long ago it happened. It's starting to make a comeback. So um, in France and Australia and other countries, there are people who are learning how to be Kamishibai um, men and women, and they're getting their bikes and they're starting to go out and tell these traditional fairy tales and stories to people who will listen on the street, which I think is really cool.